Hey, sir. Hello. Alec Benjamin with guitar? Yeah. Do you just travel around with that always? Just Well, yeah. In tow? Yeah, Wherever always. Yeah, I mean, I'm never traveling if it's not really related to my music, so. True. <clears throat> yeah, so always, always by your side. Yeah. All reliable. I Good to have know. you here. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. In town, Philadelphia, the show at the Met. Yes, sir. It's exciting. Yeah. One of my favorite venues in the city. Yeah, I've never been there, but I've heard great things, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've seen a lot of incredible shows there. Uh, so welcome. Welcome to TDY Studios. This has got to be your first time here. Yeah, We're... this building is really cool. By Pretty the nice, way. right? Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's good to see you again. Uh, yeah, you too, man. When was uh, the last how... time I, we saw each other? <sighs> Before 2020. Yeah, it must be. It's been a few years. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's take it back to... 2020 you release your your debut album yeah went when during right, a global right as pandemic, right as the pandemic started which is fantastic timing <laughs> yeah no one's really winning it live it's a, it's a tough time for it you was to... actually on the day that all of the protests started in los angeles and everything so and countrywide so it was just like it just happened to be like even in a bad time it was the worst the moment. worst time the yeah worst <laughs> yeah wow but it's okay you know i learned a lot from it and and, um, you know, it is what it is, right? Like, ultimately, the good thing about the music is that, you know, it, it, it lived on past the date of release. So Right. Okay. There's no expiration date on there. Yeah. Fans can go to it whenever they want. Right, yeah. So, but nonetheless, you put out this body of work. It's your debut album. It's your mm -hmm. baby. Obviously, the world's in the state that it's in. Right. How is your mental headspace? How are you taking this? Are not you great, not great. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, I would assume that. <laughs> it wasn't fun. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, you have to sort of, like, move past it. And so, ultimately, like, I, I just, like, kind of, just like everybody else, I, I stopped working for a little bit and was just, like, I mean, not everybody else. There were a lot of people who were doing, like, very important jobs, like, you know, making sure people got groceries and, you yeah. know, driving people to and from different places and stuff. So, you know, not like everybody else. I had the luxury of having been at home and uh i just you know i stopped for a little bit and then i decided to make some more music and now here i am that's with a, more that's music yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly you kept going it's, but there was a moment if i'm correct me if i'm wrong but you honestly started thinking about plan b like you started thinking like i think a lot of us did during the pandemic because yeah. there's a lot of unknown mm -hmm. i thought those same things too like what's my what's my plan b what's my exit strategy we don't know what the world's going to be like right were you thinking those thoughts and yeah i mean i didn't but i didn't really ultimately i didn't I didn't get anywhere like substantive because mm. I didn't come up with a good plan B. So I, I didn't either. I'm yeah, still here. Yeah, exactly. I was like, what am I qualified <laughs> well, for? Well, that's good that we're still here. Though. We're still yeah. here. We made you it. Know, but now I'm sort of just like kind of like picking up the pieces and getting started again. And it's nice that I still had, you know, I feel lucky that I still had um, a job to come back to and people are still wanting to listen to my music and I have a second chance. So that made me feel good. But uh, I'm not sure what my plan B would be. <laughs> We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Hopefully <laughs> yeah. never. Yeah, hopefully uh, never. So you, you you take some time off during quarantine. You're reflecting. Um, you just dropped the debut album. So what made you pick up the pen again? And then what was your the first song you wrote? Well, I think what made me start making music again was... There was, like, a lot of stuff going on in the world that impacted me in different ways. And then I sort of felt like you know I wanted to talk about it and the best way I know to express myself is through music so I just started writing songs and I didn't necessarily at the time um, anticipate that the music I was making would turn into an album but it did and the first song I wrote is a song called Till I Will Die Young nice. which is about like what was going on around the time of the protests and <clears throat> you know found sort of like everybody kind of like reached their breaking point in different ways um, and so that's what the song is about. You know, you've always been very outspoken about mental health. How was your mental health during uh, the pandemic and during quarantine? Like, I've always struggled with anxiety, been through, you know, in therapy throughout my whole life. Was your anxiety through the roof during this time? Because mine, surprisingly, was not. It was the opposite. I'm not mm -hmm. sure why. Hard to explain. Maybe because I was inside with my loved ones and that's all I needed or wanted. Walk me through just your, I don't know, your your mental headspace during that time. Well... I do better when I'm busy and I don't have mm. time to think about things. And so when I have too much downtime, I start to, my mind starts to wander and I get, I get anxious. And so I think it wasn't really great, but I'm only starting now, like to realize, like, well, no, it wasn't good. I gained a lot of weight. Uh, I did I, do that. <laughs> I think everyone had their fair share of that, right? Yeah, I ate. I didn't eat very well. 
you know, I, I'm not like a big drinker, but I definitely drank more than I've ever drank, mm. you know, and I feel like ultimately all of that had like a, an adverse impact on my mental state. And then also it was just like really sad because I missed, um, I missed my life before. Um, but there were definitely parts of the pandemic that like I'll look back on and be like, oh man, like that was cool that I got to spend so much time with my mom and dad. You know, that was, that's really awesome. Cause normally I'm on the road, I'm touring and as much as I love doing this, I do miss out on time with my family. But uh, I think, you know, overall, I definitely struggled a lot. But I was probably also struggling with some of the, you know, things that were sort of like left over from before the pandemic that I hadn't had time to deal with. And now that I had all this extra time, I was able to deal with it and I had to face it. And that wasn't so pleasant. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But this all led to this new chapter, yes. uh, which is on commentary, the album yeah. that you released in April. Congratulations on this Thanks. project. Thank the you. The songs that you writ, you wrote in over you know, quarantine, the mm -hmm. pandemic, now they're out into the world. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to have this project out? It feels good. Um, it's a totally different, it's like a new, it's a, uh, it feels good. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's like yeah. totally weird getting used to everything again and figuring out like, you know, everyone's kind of getting back to it still. I feel like, you know, it's like such a, it was such like a cataclysmic shift in the world where it's like, it's not like all of a sudden you don't just snap and everything goes back to normal. So, you know, trying to figure out what it means to like, you know, release an album now, it's, it's all different. The landscape has changed, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's still the same. You know, you put out music, you tour it, and then you see what people think, and then you go make more music and you tour it again. So, Rinse and repeat. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> it's the same yeah. formula, right? Mm -hmm. Not too much has changed. And touring has got to feel so good for you. Uh, did I read right that like, you, you were talking to a therapist and you were saying that uh, if you couldn't perform, you wouldn't even want to do music. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. Performing is, feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Just, uh, the writing aspect, because I know that you're a songwriter at heart, that alone is not enough for you to feel fulfilled. Well, if you don't get to share the ideas that you make in your songs, then it's like, feels like it's kind of like, I mean, I make music so that I can communicate and reach out to other people and sort of share my ideas. And for me, like the best form for doing that is is uh, in a live setting. And mm. so if I didn't have the uh, ability to do that, I don't think that it would be something that I would really want to do. Yeah. But also like getting to post stuff and release music, you know, I guess suppose like, you know, getting to like have a song played on the radio or getting to release it online or whatever is cool. But it doesn't really get me going as much as like getting to take my guitar and walk into a venue or even just like walk into a room of people and just the song yeah. yeah to have that raw energy that connection with your mm -hmm. fans i'm sure having them sing the lyrics back at you i'm sure it's just an unreal yeah. feeling that you can't really uh yeah you can't yeah even sometimes though like getting to play in a room of people where like people are quiet and they're not saying anything but just to know that people are listening to you right it's, it's nice that's amazing mm -hmm. so you're you're here you're at the met mm -hmm. um oh you know the one thing that has changed with music in the street is the social media aspect mm-hmm how, what are your thoughts on, on this? Because I, I avoid social media. I, mm. I hate it. I think you're similar in that way, but you needed to use it as a vehicle to promote your music. Mm -hmm. And one, your single now is, is big on TikTok. So how do you weigh the good and the bad when it comes to social media and using it to your benefit? Well, it's a sort of like, I think ultimately like the music will always outlast like the platforms that it populates. Um, but, you know, uh, I'd like to, for my music to have success, um, you know, while I'm alive, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and also like you know within a short enough uh, time span from its release um, that it uh, incentivizes everybody around me to help me promote it. Mm. So um, I feel like in that regard, I have to engage with the social media platforms because they do help promote the music like right now. Um, but I try to at the same time just be conscious of the fact that like you know these are these things are like still sort of like they're like they're not i can't take them as seriously um as i as i once did because if i do it will just destroy me and also like you know i think that uh um yeah i don't know man i don't i it i i don't i don't love it but it's just it's just part of it, you know. Mm. It's always been part of it. If it, it was MySpace when I first started, or my when my sister was like listening to Warped Tour bands, and if it wasn't MySpace, then it was Twitter, and then it was it's always something, right? It's just always something, you know. So, but then again, like you know, you have to sort of just like take it with a grain of salt. But you know, you gotta. It is what it is. 
and you got to do it. Just kind of set your boundaries, right? Yeah. And, and make it make sense for, for you and for what you do and not be uh, fake about it or... Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's such a big question because it's like, honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I think about it. It mm. is what it is. So I, it is what it is. It, it exists just, whether we like it or not. So. Yeah. But I try to just remind myself that like that stuff is like, you know, it's very like of the moment and if it bothers me now or whatever, good shot that it's not going to going to be a different thing but then it's like you have to spend so much time like learning about something that you know is not gonna like really ain't that be the around truth. for that long and then it's like <laughs> yeah you know it's like trying to figure out a way to divide like your your mental capital so that because it's like all the time that you spend doing those things you could be like making songs or and it's gonna change the algorithm in a week or whatever anyway so it's yeah all i mean like also like i remember rules. it was vine like when i first got signed mm. you know and then it was like then it was not vine then it was instagram and then it was tiktok <laughs> and then it was you know and it's everyone's like Oh, it's like the next big thing, you know. It's like, crazy. can I just write songs and perform yeah. them? Can I just do that? <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. It's part of it, I suppose. I suppose evolution is not like a. It's supposed to be a painful process. It's like right. you have to evolve. You know? Yeah, evolve and change, so. and and that you. I mean, the song that we're talking about, your single, it's big on TikTok and big in the streams. Yeah, the devil doesn't bargain. And and it and it and it and it was a very painful process for me to have to sort of like catalyze the uh, the. The, the sound and like get it to go and then once it does go and it's like oh well then it's slowing down it's speeding up and it's like oh, fuck. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> well let's, let's, let's talk about the, the art of the song which is you know why why we're all here why you're here uh talk to me about the, the making of the song the writing of the song what the song means to you um well it's about two things i tell you the true story and then well so <laughs> i was honestly I was frustrated with my record company, and I wrote it about them. This is Columbia? No, this is Atlantic. It's Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I, I felt like... Your second ex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt like they weren't listening to me, and I felt like they weren't giving me what I wanted. Mm. So I wrote The Devil Doesn't Bark. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I changed, the, I changed the meaning, because also at the time, I was had a friend who was in a relationship that was like really not, um, not good for her. And I had also been in a relationship like that and needed someone to tell me, like, stop going back to this person, mm. you know? Uh, and um, so I, like, changed the lyrics to be about that. That's amazing. But, yeah, well, yeah. So it was like, I feel like it's a similar feeling. Like, it doesn't matter if you have sort of like a, if it's a business relationship or if it's like a friendship or if it's a romantic relationship, you know, there's often times where, like, you know, you just kind of have to, it's gonna, it is what it is, you know? You can't, you gotta, you gotta level set your expectations. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Alec Benjamin, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Should I throw something at you? Should I throw you underwear? Th do you, people throw underwear? At you? I don't know. I you no, no. <laughs> you could if you wanted <laughs> no, to. <not> to. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me.